Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are checking out the fastest OLED monitor to pass through the Kit Guru Labs, the MSI 272QPX50. Utilizing a souped up 3rd gen 4040p QD OLED panel from Samsung, not only does it push the refresh rate to an eye-watering 500Hz, but it also promises enhanced brightness for both SDR and HDR usage. Is this the ultimate OLED monitor for gaming? Let's find out today. Despite the fact that it is launching in 2025, MSI's 272QP X50 isn't actually using the 2025, also known as the 4th Gen QD OLED panel from Samsung. As correctly pointed out by TFT Central, it's technically a 3rd Gen panel, but just with some enhancements to allow for the higher refresh rate and increased brightness. It basically lacks the EL 3.0 technology that defines Gen 4 or the 2025 panel. So it's just quickly worth making that clear. It is technically an enhanced 3rd Gen panel or 2024 panel, rather than one of the latest and greatest. Still, faster and brighter definitely sounds good to me, and with an MSRP of £799, but it's currently on sale for £699, it may not be quite as expensive as you'd expect for an OLED monitor with these specs. Today then, we're going to find out exactly how good it is, and whether or not it's worth buying. Starting things off with the design of the monitor then, it is essentially the same chassis as MSI's 272URX that we reviewed earlier in the year, and that really isn't a surprise given both are 27-inch QD OLED panels. It's overall a fairly inoffensive, mostly black aesthetic. I personally do wish there was more metal used throughout the construction, as it does feel a little bit plasticky for my tastes. I do, however, appreciate the kind of square-ish foot, and I much prefer this to the typical V-shaped foot. The stand does also offer the full array of ergonomic adjustments as well, and that includes up to 110 millimeters of height adjust, 30 degrees of swivel both left and right, tilt from minus five to plus 20 degrees, and then you do also get full 90 degree pivot functionality if you want to use the screen vertically. Third party VESA 100 by 100 mounts are also supported. As for display inputs then, we find a relatively compact selection with one DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.1, a Type-C port that supports DPL mode and 15 watts power delivery, and then a headphone jack. Now, if you're not familiar with MSI's different product series, and I know this might seem like a tangent, but it's worth pointing out this is actually from the MAG series, which is effectively their more affordable range, and it sits below both the MEG and the MPG ranges. The reason I'm bringing this up is I think that's the reason why this monitor is lacking a few features, why it's got no USB hub, no KVM functionality, and just DisplayPort 1.4 rather than DisplayPort 2.1, as those features are going to be coming to a higher-end MPG model later on in the year. It is good to see a joystick for navigating the OSD though, and this is flanked by the power button and one user configurable button. The OSD itself is using the same menu system as we've come to expect from MSI, so I really don't have any major complaints here, and I have to say it's pretty good. It's very quick to navigate using the joystick, things are sensibly laid out, and it's a very well-featured selection too, with all the gamer-specific options we've come to expect, as well as customizable white balance, an sRGB emulation mode, and so on. Just before we do move on to our panel testing though, there are the usual QD OLED quirks and caveats that we do need to mention. I'm not going to go into loads of detail here as this is the same sort of thing we've been repeating in every QD OLED monitor, but is the type of thing like the lack of a polarizing layer, which might mean that some users notice higher than expected black levels. Personally, it's not a problem for me, and if you game at night or in a dim environment, I don't think it will bother you either, but it is worth pointing out. Text fringing has also been an issue in the past due to the subpixel layout as well. Again, it's never really bothered me that much and it is still a clear improvement over the first gen panels, but again, another thing to point out. The final thing to mention though is of course burn-in, which is a risk for any OLED screen, but credit to MSI, there are a ton of features in the OSD, all designed to reduce the brightness of static elements on screen, plus you do get a three-year warranty that does include burn-in coverage. If you're looking for a new chair, then definitely go and check out boolies.co.uk. They offer a whole host of gaming and office chairs that come in a variety of different finishes and different colours. That brings us on to our actual panel testing then, where we use Portrait Display's Kalman Ultimate software with an X-Rite i1 Display Pro Plus colorimeter. 
If we kick things off then with brightness and contrast, we can straight away see this is indeed the brightest OLED monitor we've ever reviewed, peaking at just below 310 nits for a full screen white image. It gets very dim too with a minimum of just 28 nits, while contrast is effectively infinite as with any OLED. The good news is as well that despite the higher brightness, the output luminance is steady regardless of the window size or APL, so you won't notice the screen dimming or brightening in SDR regardless of what's on screen. We see extremely wide gamut coverage as we'd expect from a QD OLED panel too. It well exceeds the sRGB space and delivers 99.2% coverage of DCI-P3 alongside 97.8% reporting for the Adobe RGB color space and 80.4% coverage for Rec 2020. Default grayscale performance is another solid area for the 272QP X50 as well. It does have a very slight warm tint, but the average CCT of 6155K is only a 5% deviation from the 6500K target, so it's hardly a significant error. Gamma tracking is nice and accurate too, closely hugging the 2.2 target and averaging 2.18. Overall, the Grayscale Delta E2000 of 1.89 indicates a high level of accuracy out of the box. Now, I did also test with a manual color balance, this time keeping the blue channel at 50, but reducing red to 47 and green to 48. Now, that did deliver an improvement to both the average CCT and Grayscale Delta E2000, though it is worth pointing out that enabling manual color balance also affects brightness for some reason. At the 70% setting, we dropped from 264 nits stock to just 86 nits, so that is a trade off to keep in mind. Looking at our saturation sweeps now, as we'd expect from a QD OLED monitor, we do see very high levels of oversaturation compared to the sRGB space, though things are more accurate compared to the DCI-P3 space. That also carries over to our color accuracy testing, with an average Delta E2000 of 4.68 relative to the sRGB space, though again this does improve to an average Delta E of 2.29 when looking at the DCI-P3 results. Thankfully, MSI has included an sRGB emulation mode in the OSD, and this does a great job at clamping the gamut, while grayscale performance is still just a touch warm, but generally pretty accurate. The saturation and color accuracy average Delta E's also improved compared to stock, with results in the 1.2 to 1.4 range, which again indicates high levels of accuracy, so this mode is well worth using. As ever though, full calibration will be required for the best possible results and this improved things further. The grayscale average Delta E hit just 0.95 and both the saturation and color accuracy results drop below one. I really wouldn't say it's necessary for gaming, but it does go to show you can use this OLED panel for color sensitive work as well. Next up then, we're moving on to talk about response times and motion clarity, where we're using the open source response time tool. As this is an OLED monitor, we're not gonna to focus too much on the response times, as we know these monitors do deliver the best of the bunch, regardless of refresh rate, and this MSI is no different with an average response time right around the one millisecond mark. Of course, that doesn't mean that actual motion clarity is the same at different refresh rates though, and I was really intrigued to see what visual benefit 500Hz would offer over the previous 360Hz QD OLED panels we have tested. As you can see, it's not a night and day difference, but I'd say there's definitely an improvement to clarity. The white dots on the UFO, for instance, are now less blurred, as are the Aliens 3 eyes. Compared to 240Hz as well, the difference is even more pronounced, so there is definitely a benefit to pushing the refresh rate as high as possible. For comparisons then, I've included the ASRock PGO32 UFS, which is a WOLED panel which can hit 480Hz using its dual mode functionality, along with the ASRock PG27 FFX 2A, which is the fastest LCD I've ever tested with a 520Hz refresh rate. The overall motion clarity between the two OLED panels is very similar, and I think that is to be expected given the difference between 500 and 480 hertz is not large. Clearly though, a 500 hertz OLED blows a similarly specced LCD out of the water with much less blur and zero ghosting. Now, you might be sitting there thinking that 500 hertz sounds good and all, but if you can't hit frame rates up to 500 FPS, then what's the point? Thankfully though, MSI has included a new MPRT mode, also known as Black Frame Insertion or BFI, and that places a black frame after every regular frame to improve motion clarity. This means that with it enabled, you get broadly equivalent motion clarity at 250Hz as you would without BFI at 500Hz, and it's obviously a lot easier to drive games at 250fps compared to 500. Now it does disable adaptive sync and brightness is capped at 152 nits max, but it could be well worth using depending on the type of games you play. In terms of the real world gaming experience then, all I can really say is holy moly, this is a fast 
gaming monitor. Now, I did just mention you don't need to strictly hit 500 FPS to benefit from the improvements to motion clarity, but higher frame rates also translate to lower latency, and that is another area that helps the screen feel super fast and slick. It's the motion clarity though that I just really can't get over how good it looks. Coming from a 4K 240Hz QD OLED, I have definitely noticed the difference. Of course, the 1440p resolution over 27 inches won't be as sharp as that, but it is still more than good enough and is generally considered the sweet spot by modern standards, so it's really hard to argue with that. Now, even if you don't run every single game you're playing at super high frame rates, you will still benefit from the super punchy image with its very saturated look and the infinite contrast, so slower paced single player titles still look great. Though, I would say if that's your primary genre of choice, you may not feel the need to jump up to 500Hz straight away, though you could also argue there's an element of future proofing here if you kept this thing for, say, the next 10 years. HDR though is another vital area to test and here MSI now includes three different modes. We've got the True Black 500, Peak 1000 Nits and a new EOTF Boost mode. The first thing to establish is that the Peak 1000 Nits mode behaves as expected in terms of brightness, hitting over 1000 Nits at the 1% and 2% APLs before dropping back and it's also worth pointing out that the EOTF Boost mode exhibits identical behaviour. Now, the True Black 500 mode is much like the previous True Black 400 offerings, except it's now brighter across the board, hence the new certification. We can also see, compared to MSI's own 272URX, that the new 272QPX50's True Black 500 mode is indeed a good chunk brighter than the older True Black 400 mode, and that is regardless of APL. The same also goes for the Pika 1000 Nits mode, given it's slightly brighter than the 272URX for all window sizes, bar the 1% and 2% APL, so it is really good to see this improvement. What's really interesting though is the new EOTF boost mode, designed to fix the issue with the Pika 1000 Nits mode, where the EOTF tracking rolls off increasingly early as window size increases, resulting in the image looking overly dark. For these synthetic tests, the EOTF boost mode looks absolutely fantastic, producing much more accurate EOTF tracking, and generally that translates into the real world. The key thing to note though is that the EOTF boost mode doesn't actually fix the native panel dimming, which is what results in images looking too dark, rather it's kind of like a software bypass, and as Tim from Warnosis and Box has pointed out in his review of this monitor, you can occasionally see the panel brightening and dimming as the screen brightness changes from dark to light and vice versa. However, I have to say in general use, I really didn't notice that often, and to my eye, the EOTF boost mode looks a good bit brighter than the Peak 1000 Nits mode, which is great to see. The difference isn't that noticeable in darker scenes with a low APL given there's less panel dimming in those scenarios anyway, but in brighter scenes I really do think you can make the difference, so this is definitely a good inclusion from MSI. Bringing it all back together then, as the fastest OLED monitor we have ever reviewed, MSI's 272QP X50 is clearly aimed at gamers looking to extract every last ounce of competitive advantage from their setups, though I also have to say I don't think its appeal will be limited to just esports pros. For one, the factory calibration is very solid with accurate grayscale and gamma tracking, MSI's sRGB mode continues to impress, delivering low average delta E's, while the updated third gen panel is the brightest OLED we've ever tested for SDR usage. As for the actual gaming experience, it's just absolutely phenomenal. A 500Hz QD OLED is every bit as fast and fluid as it sounds, and thanks to MSI's addition of black frame insertion, you don't need to hit 500fps in every game to benefit from increased motion clarity. 500Hz itself though does bring other latency benefits too, with this screen delivering one of the lowest lag results we have ever seen. Now, in terms of the negative points, there are a few features missing, including things like a USB hub and KVM functionality, though I do think that has been done deliberately, given this is a MAG series, one of the more affordable ranges from MSI, rather than a more premium MPG or MEG monitor. That does also, I think, explain the reason why it's only DisplayPort 1.4 rather than 2.1, and the fact that the USB port is limited to just 15 watts of charging. I am expecting those features to be available in a higher end monitor from the MPG series later on in the year, though details on that I don't have confirmed just yet. The only other thing to say is that, as with other MSI monitors I have reviewed, I do find the build quality just a little bit plastic-y, though it's really not a deal breaker, I just personally prefer to see a metal stand or metal foot. I do however think those negative points can be easily forgiven considering the sheer speed and fidelity on offer from MSI's 272QP X50. It's also currently on sale at £699 though the MSRP is £799 so pricing may go back up. 
But either way, if you're in the market for one of the fastest gaming experiences that PC gaming can currently offer, this monitor is well worth buying. And with that, guys, that is where I'm going to end this video. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up. And as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to ding that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload a new video. If you want to carry on the conversation as well, you can find a link to our Discord server down in the description. And while there, you'll also find links to both our merch store and our Patreon if you want to help us out that way. That's it for this one, though, guys. I'm Don with the Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.